second appellant. Please, my lord. I appear on behalf of the state together with uh, Mr. Dutuwezi and Mr. Pinge. consulted with uh, the first applicant in this matter. Um, I have communicated to the state and to my learned friend, Mr. Siamunji. We would need approximately an hour to conclude uh, with what we have, just to ensure finality. We have drafted provisional new facts. We've got all the documentation available. Um, I'm, what I would have suggested, my lord, and of course it's subject to input from Mr. Siamunji and from uh, Mr. Ipingi, um, is that we could continue with the second applicant in this matter and that we will, during the tea break and during the lunch break, we will be able to conclude. Um, and obviously, there'd also be, probably be uh, after court and tomorrow morning that we could continue uh, with... I, I don't anticipate, my lord, that it would take that long. There's just certain elements that we need to just get uh, conclusion on as far as the first applicant is concerned. Um, and then we will provide a complete uh, set out of new facts pertaining to the bail application, plus full disclosure of everything to the state and to Mr. Siamunji. Although, as far as his client is concerned and my client is concerned, there's no real overlap whatsoever. As you please, my lord. Thank you. Mr. Siamunji? Uh, may I please you, my lord? Uh, we are in the hands of the court. But uh, on our part, we are ready to proceed. Uh, please, the court. Uh, Mr. Maron, please, my lord. Um, my lord, um, if first applicant needs an hour and a half, my lord, but the court has given them time to consult, but if he needs an hour and a half, my lord, um, courts usually we start at 10 o'clock. And if he needs an hour, my lord, I don't think there will be any prejudice to any parties. If he's given that one hour to finish off his consultation, my lords, and um, my lord, uh, I'm saying this that um, they are addressing the court that he is the first applicant, second applicant. I've always referred this honourable court to the Metal State versus Tamba Pillai, where there's an order of accused persons or applicants and are appearing in court. That order should not should not be just lightly interfered with my lord uh, so if he needs one and a half hour, one and a half hours to, to start my lord i think the state would pray to this honorable court to grant them that one and a half hours and we started 10 as we usually do my lord thank you mr maron just briefly on the law as fast the matter of uh, tampa pillar is concerned that pertain to a criminal trial this is a a, a matter a bail application which is sui generis. The same rules that apply in terms of uh, the order of accused doesn't apply in a bail application. We've already had, for instance, the other accused who brought other bail applications before this court and um, the first applicant here is, is, is a preferential accused, if I may put it that way. But I'm in the hands of the court, my lord. Thank you. I hear you, and in as much as I agree that each is bringing their on separate applications. I would like to have order uh, to my proceedings such that if we commence, all of them should be in a position to proceed. Uh, the one that is not in a position to proceed probably uh, should be excused to prepare properly and not keep joining and so on. Um, I just want smooth proceedings. Uh, so I'll go with the proposal by uh, uh, Mr. Marondese, uh, unless you feel that you really require more time, and then we may just decide as to whether we should excuse your client and then only proceed with the second applicant. Uh, yes, please. I don't think it'll take more than an hour. So I, sh I should allow you that time to conclude your... Uh, I'm indebted, my lord. Yes, thank you. Um, um, until up, up until what time? Uh, until 11, my lord. Okay. Um, I, may I just encourage that if there's anything that parties would like to exchange, if you can just resolve the preliminary issue so that when we commence, we just 
um, uh, commence with the proceedings in earnest. Uh, we'll then adjourn until 11 o'clock as um, requested. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, my lord. Thank yes. you for the indulgence. We're now ready to proceed. Thank you. My lord, I, we have prepared <coughs> a bundle for you. There will be a second bundle that will be presented to the court uh, as we go along. Oh. This will be the first. The relevance thereof will become germane to the court as we proceed. I've also provided a full set out of the new facts uh, for this bail application. The state is in possession of copies. I will then just ask that the court orderly provides your lordship with a copy of the file that we intend using, as well as the new fa facts. With, your le with the leave of the court, my lord, I will read the new facts as provided into the record, and then we will call Mr. Esau as the first witness. You may proceed. As you please. In the High Court of Namibia, case number CC6-2021, Main Division, held at Vintuk, in the matter between Bernard Esau, applicant and the state. Bernard Esau, new facts, bail application. New facts, one. Investigations into the matter are now complete. Thus, there exists no threat of interference and or additional evidence to enhance the evidence currently at hand against the applicant. Two, case number CC6-2021 and CC7-2021 has been joined together with disclosure. Disclosure constitutes about 95 lever arch files a 144-page indictment, 44-page pretrial memorandum, seven-page summary of substantial facts, and a witness list of 342 witnesses the state intends to call, which establishes a protracted trial and infringes on the applicant's right to a fair and speedy trial. Three, the applicant has been detained in pretrial incarceration for about two years and five months between the time of his initial failed bail application in July 2020 and this current bail application whilst the trial is yet to commence at some point or date to be established, with extradition of curcu still being attempted by the state. Four, disclosure reveals that the state does not have a strong case against the applicant and that he is being incriminated by association, which he will show to be untrue. Five, the applicant's evidence will reveal that he has nothing to do with the offences and he was being used by his co-accused and the applicant will provide evidence pertaining thereto. Sorry, Mr. Metcalf. Number four. Number four, my lord, is disclosure reveals that yes. the state does not have a strong case against the applicant Thank you. and that he's being incriminated by association, which he will show to be untrue. My lord, I did provide a copy to the court. Oh, yes. Um, Thank you, Mr. Metcalf. You want me to read number five into the, again, my lord? You may proceed to number six. Thank you. Thank you. The applicant's name and credentials as Minister of Fisheries have been opportunistically and falsely optimized by some of his co-accused. Seven, the state added additional charges not con canvassed in the initial bail application. Eight, the applicant's med medical condition deteriorated while in custody and since his last bail application. Nine, the applicant's personal circumstances have deteriorated exponentially over the past two years since his last bail application. Thank you, my lord. With your leave, I will now call uh, Mr. Esau to the witness stand. You may do so. Thank you, Mr. Esau. My Lord, in the interests of speed and capacitation in this matter, the accused has been provided with a file, the exact same file which the state has and which the court has been provided with. I don't know if my learned friend has any objection there to I don't think so. All right. 
Thank you, my lord. Um, there's just one issue which is which uh, I need to raise, my lord, with the, with regards to yes the issue of the record of proceedings. Um, because there's a bail on your facts, there's been a, there's a record of proceedings. It has not been made available to the court. I know they will say that it's the same with Thompson, but this is a separate bail application, which the court needs to have a record. In case this matter proceeds on appeal, that record will be required, my lord. Let me hear what Mr. Metcalf says. Yes, I concur with my learned friend, my lord. Um, I, we were of the impression that the record is already with the court and to duplicate it again because it's exactly the same. But however, in the interests of uh, fullness and completeness, we will provide a copy thereof to this court in due course. I don't know if my learned friend wants yet another copy. He must just tell us as well. Mr. Marondete, may you respond to that? He's inquiring if you'll need a copy. Yes, my lord. I, I need a copy, my lord. Okay. Uh, yes, it appears I was not involved in that bill application, my lord. All right. We'll provide it on the memory stick to my learned friend, as you please, my lord. Thank you. Miss Sophia. Good morning, sir. Do you have any objection to one stating the prescribed oath? Can you state your full name for the record? I am Bernadeso. Do you say the evidence you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing else but the truth? I do. So, raise your so, so help me God. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Abasau. Please uh, feel free to mm. sit down in case you would mm. like to take a seat. Thank you, my lord. Mr. Iso, please address the court when you're speaking so that the court can hear you and speak clearly so that you are recorded and that we can hear what is being said. Could you tell this court how old you are? My Lord, when I applied for my bail in June 2020, the first attempt, I was 62 years of age. Now I am 60 five years of age, my lord. Can you tell this court what has changed in your personal circumstances from when the initial bail application was brought in July 2020? My lord, what happened in my personal circumstances is that the time when I applied for bail, the failed bail, I was 34 years in wedlock with my wife. Now as I'm applying today, I am 36 years in wedlock with my wife. My Lord, I have a child who is paralyzed due to a spina bifida at birth. She is wheelchair bound and under my care, my Lord. Since my incarceration and the application for liberty my Lord, I have experienced a lot of prejudices in terms of stock theft. On the 7th of the 7th month, 2022, on my farm, Dakota 35, livestock was stolen. We have reported this very case with Leonardville Police Station. 
and the criminal file that was opened is 0707 CR, in fact, my lord, 2022. My lord, I had, I've experienced another criminal matter on my farm, Dakota, whereby, in fact, there was a housebreaking on my main dwelling. This was also reported, but presently I don't have, in fact, the CR number. Criminal activities took place at my parental, parental house in Swakopmund in Mondesa, whereby my small dwelling there was also broken in. Items were stolen, I don't know what items, and clothing were stolen, my lord. And it's because of my absence that these things are happening, my lord. I cannot even attend to my emotional matters in terms of, in terms of visiting the grave sites of my grandparents, my parents, my families, even not even attend to funerals of my family members, my Lord, due to this very incarceration. I've never met, in fact, I've never seen my daughter, our last born daughter, for this since incarceration and since I applied for bail. I have not seen her, the one who is wheelchair bound, my lord. Mr. Iso, can you tell the court is she prohibited from seeing you, or is there a problem with logistics? What is the reason that you she, you can't see her? My lord, the facility where I am is not is not complying to to disabled persons. They don't have proper, they don't have ramps. You have to park very far. And this has also contributed to the prejudices that I'm really experiencing now as incarcerated. Mr. Iso, while we on the issue of the facilities at the Vintuk Correctional Services and access to your daughter, can you describe to this court what it's like when you have to consult with your legal practitioners. What are the facilities that are availed to you? My Lord, I am disadvantaged. My privacy is really not, it's not there. I have to go into a consultancy room that is under surveillance. You have very, very strict security measures there in terms of cameras, in terms of officers, and coming from a background as well, my Lord, of having been the minister who was responsible for MSC, monitoring, control, and surveillance of our EEZs through inspectors and officers. I can really see that the surveillance is, is top. It's very, very, very serious there in the Windhoek facilities. Yes. Now, the size of the facility that's given to you for purposes of consultation, can you describe this to the court and the conditions in which you're forced to have to consult? My Lord, when my counsel are coming into the Windhoek facilities, they have to clear everything that they are bringing along are to be checked. Every piece of paper must be looked at by our officers there. They have a certain time as well, time limit to consult. You have to apply 
in advance if you want time for consultations. Hence, that is not a conducive environment to do your consultations. The number, the voluminous documentation, the disclosure that we got in terms of uh, the files, the pages, over 80 to 90,000 pages, you have to go through those very things. And you can't do justice to that comrade. Your, your worship. It's actually your lordship. Uh, you, they worship down there. Here they lord it over them. Oh, no. Your lordship. My apologies, my politicians, sometimes. Yes, continue. Your lordship, my financial situation. I am totally prejudiced, disadvantaged, my lord on my financial situations. I am presently, presently I am restrained. There's a provisional restraint on all my assets, fixed as well as current. I cannot honor my financial obligations with my counsel. I cannot honor my lord my financial obligations with the agribank for payments of my farm. I cannot honor my short-term insurances with my farm. All this was caused after, after I applied for liberty, for the court's consideration to grant me liberty. Before we move off the correctional uh, services and the facilities there, how big is the room which is, or the consultation area which is allocated to you for consultation? Can you indicate to the court? My Lord, well, I'm not so good in estimating the, the measures, but I can estimate from where I'm standing. It is lengthwise, it is from this to the, to the, to the borders. That's the length. Worthwise is from this wall to the edge of the bench here. So Lord, you have for, a bit. For the record, the witness indicates that the area allocated for consultation is approximately three meters by four meters in size, 12 square meters. Mm -hmm. That's the consultation, my Lord. That is the area for the consultations, but for the cells where we are in, as I've said, it's maybe two and a half to, to four, meters, four or five meters, where you have a bed, a small, toilet, a wash basin, as well as a bench where you can do your writing. But it's too small for accommodating all the voluminous files and all those documents that you need to prepare yourself for a proper presentation in defense of the case which I'm faced with. In terms of privacy and the kind of airflow which goes into the consultation rooms, can you, com can you comment on that? My Lord, there are no air cons. It is so hot that you go to 40, 42 centigrades in terms of temperature for consultations. It is not conducive, my Lord to consult properly and to provide properly the information, the evidences that is needed for the court. 
So it is not quite a conducive environment where we are finding, where I am finding myself. Can you also tell this court whether any refreshments or meals or anything is served to you while you're in the process of consultation? A lot. Yesterday, when I was in consultations, for the day I just had an apple. They say apple a day keeps the doctor away. But, my Lord, I was given, I had only one apple which I bought a week or two weeks back. There was no water serving service, at least really to, to me as well as to the, my council. Okay. Now, your medical condition. Well, let us pause at this juncture before we go to the medical con uh, condition. Your situation with NAMRA, with the re what we used to call the receiver of revenue, could you please enlighten the court on that since your incarceration? My Lord, in this bundle of fi the file which I have here, we have provide, I have provided a report from my medical no, no, not on your medical. First on your, uh, it follows a sequence. I don't want to break the mm. sequence. Mm. Could you please address us on the issues pertaining to NAMRA? NAMRA, yeah. My Lord, I was, I want my Lord to refer to, to the file. I hope it's uh, A, uh, uh, device file A. Uh, there's a letter included in the file dated 15th. Mr. Esau, could you just speak up so his no. lordship can hear? Mm. Um, I can hear him. Uh, as you please, Maybe my lord. You can just direct me. I see there are numberings. Yes. One, two, up to. <coughs> 29. Yeah, under 1A. Okay. I beg your pardon, my lord, I'm being negligent. It's uh, under 1? Okay. Yeah, 1, yeah, this one. And you refer to the first one is the letter, letter. You have Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, 15 March 2022. Correct. Could you just read that into the record? Yeah. My lord, subject. Delay in payment of leave gratuity. The Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources was in the process of paying the outstanding leave gratuity of 686,799 NAM dollars and 62 cents due to you. As per the requirements of NAMRA, the ministry requested for the issuance of a tax directive to affect the tax deductions on this particular payment. In light of this, Nam, Nam Ra rejected the issue of tax directive for the tax identification number 009-4960-10-11 due to the fact that your income tax returns were not received by NAMRA for the tax year 2015 to 2022, I mean 20, 2020. As a result, the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources is not able to effect this payment 
and you are encouraged to submit your text in turn soonest. Attach year to find the relevant communication. Mrs. Enerly Aipene, Executive Director, stamped 15 March, May 2022. March, in fact. Sorry, my, my Lord. It's March, yeah. The next attachment to the very letter was from NAMRA, Domestic Taxes Department. Ministry of Fisheries, PO Box 62824, Vanaheta, Venduk, Namibia. Deduction directive rejected. The particulars of the employee for whom directive is made. Taxpayer identification number TIN 0094-9601. Taxpayer name Bernard Martin Isso. Dear taxpayer, with reference to your application for tax directive submitted on the first of the third month, 2022, please be notified that your request is rejected due to the following reasons. Outstanding returns. My Lord, tax type income tax. Tax 2022. Period one, period from 01-03-2021 to period 28-02-2022, due date 28-02-2022. 2022 status not received. Mr. Isola, I don't know if you need to go through all of these. Could you just enlighten the court why these returns have not been attended to? My Lord, my Lord, sir. This period, the tax 2022, the tax for income tax for 2021, the income tax for 2020, income tax for 2020, for 2019, all this which was not received, and even down to 20 value addition tax, added tax, sorry, my Lord, uh, 2018, was not received, but the most important part of my tax is the period when I was incarcerated, my Lord. And this has prejudiced me for attending to this very tax matters, because my tax, my tax is done in consultation with my auditors called Grand Namibia. They are doing all along my tax, both for the farming as well as my personal taxes. I'm a pensioner, my lord. I'm a pensioner today as a pol former political office bearer. And it is very important for me also to declare this very taxes through my auditors, Grand Namibia, to the receiver of revenue. I submit my lot. Can you tell the court whether you've been able to liaise with Grand Namibia? What's the position? My lot, I tried to liaise with Grand Namibia to address this very matters, the financial matters of mine. But 
Grand Namibia seems not to come forward because they need to see me face to face. It is not an issue of me talking over the phone without the source documents, the income, the expenditures that I have incurred in terms of the farming operations. I submit, my Lord. Yes, so basically what you're saying is, would you, should you be at liberty, you would be able to sort all of this out? My Lord, as I am, if the court positively considers my bail application, I will, I will be able to attend to these matters, my financial matters. Now, even if the even if those matters are on provisional restraint, I will speak to the curator bonuses. Now, please take us through the rest of the documents. I'm going to ask the court to number them as Exhibit 1. Mm -hmm. And then each page would be A, B, C as we follow in sequence. So your first page would be Exhibit 1A. Page, one page 2 would be Exhibit 1 one B. Then we have this document, Provisional Summary Sources of Funds. Could you elucidate on that? That will be Exhibit 1 C. Uh, D. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Maybe, the, uh, I beg your pardon, my lord. There are three pages on the tax directive. Yeah. It would be uh, 1 A, 1 B, and 1 C. Form C. And the next one would be 1 D. It's headed Provisional Summary Sources of Funds. Could you comment on that? My Lord, this very provisional summary sources of funds. It's not an objection, my Lord. Yes. But I think the, the way they want to number the exhibits is a little bit queer, and it's not known in this court. Okay. Uh, we go as exhibit A, B, C, D. So I suggest that they say A1, A2, A3, A4. A1. My Lord, with your utmost respect to my erudite friend, uh, if he had a look, he would see that we would exhaust the alphabet, and that is the only reason why we're doing it on this basis, because they are numbered uh, sequentially for the court and for the state's purposes. I don't see how it makes any difference and why my learned friend would be so pseudo-academic about an issue such as this. Um, we will exhaust the alphabet just on the basis of these documents. It runs to page thir to 31, plus we have another set uh, which is going to be before the course, and numbering documents AAA uh, is just going to cause confusion. To do it this way, one, A, B, C, D, there's none of them that will exhaust the whole alphabet then, and even if they do, then we could have one AA. But it, it's just a question of pure logic and common sense, my Lord, with respect. However, I'm in the hands of the court. Well, um, <laughs> my Lord, I don't understand what he's saying, because the practice is if we get to Z, we start at AA, we go that way. If we go to double Z, we go back up to triple A again. That's what we do. All right, let's do it the way we normally do it. Um, I wouldn't have had a problem with that, but for convenience, let's stick to practice. Um, so it will be exhibit, according to your suggestion, Mr. Marontes? A1. A1. Mm -hmm. A1. Two, three, and four. A1 will be the letter. Then the next? The one is from number A2. Then the letter from Minister of Finance A3. Then the provisional summary. If they touch on it, it will be A4. Sorry, Mr. Metcalf. Um, just to indicate that the document um, delay in payment of leave gratuity is A1. The number of document is A2.
and then the rest will follow. As you please, my lord. Fine, Mr. Esau, we'll be at A4 now, courtesy of Mr. Marundedze. Document A4 is headed Provisional Summary Sources of Funds. Yeah. Thank you, my, my lord. This Provisional Summary Sources of Funds was compiled for ease of reference. For ease of reference, based on the affidavit of Mr. David Nuyoma, who is the Chief Executive Officer of GIPF, the Government Pension Fund Institute. You have attached that as well. That would then become Exhibit A5, my lord. Yes. The affidavit to which you referred, Mr. David Nuyoma. Yes, please continue. My lord, I in fact received a gratuity check on the 28th of January 2000 to the amount of 200 65,017 nam dollars and 75 cents. I further withdraw on the 26th of March 2010 when I was deployed as a Minister of State in the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, an amount of two million two hundred and seventy one thousand five hundred and twenty two and thirty three cents. This amount, my Lord, was for a home loan, in fact, uh, a bond with Standard Bank account, whereby I have transferred from this very amount of 2.2 million, 2.2 million, uh, an amount of 908,304 NAM dollars. That was the amount I have put transferred to my bond account in, with Standard Bank. And the balance was paid over to NetBank in an amount of one million three hundred and sixty three thousand two hundred and eighteen. Nam dollars, 33 cents. Uh, Mr. Isol, just for clarity, uh, how long have you been serving uh, as a member of parliament? Or had you been serving? My lord, I was a member of parliament since 1995, 21st March 1995, the year of the Lord. Until? I was a member of parliament until 2019 when I stepped aside from my position as Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources. So I stepped aside Approximately 25 years. Yes, my lord. I see. And then on the basis of this, this pension, these, these were the pension monies which were paid to you? This was the pension monies that was paid to me prior to my retirement in 2019, my stepping aside. 
Yes. That was 1,628,236 nam dollars and an 8 cents. Zero 08, my lord. And you've attached the affidavit of Mr. Nuyomo. My lord, I did attach the affidavit as evidence to the money that I received from the pension, from my pension alone, that, only from the pension fund. That document, my lord, is Exhibit A5. It follows on from provisional summary source of funds. Yes. Yes, anything further you wish to add on that? You have a further document. Mm -hmm. uh, it's headed one-third benefit payment. Can you comment on that? Date of the 20th of April 2010. It will become Exhibit A6. Yes. My Lord, in terms of further uh, summaries of the payments I received from from the GIPF member of parliament and other office bearers pension fund on the 20th of April 2010 so this was just a summary of one third benefit payment on the 21st of March 2010 as follows. One third total member share as at the 31st of March 2010 was 6,814,000 567 NAM dollars. One third of that non taxable amount was 2,271,522 NAM dollars 33 cents. And the pension home loan amount was 908,000. Three hundred and four NAM dollars. And the balance of that was one million three hundred and sixty three two hundred and eighteen NAM dollars and thirty three cents. And the balance is paid in your current account number with NetBank, account number one two nine. Zero double zero six seven five two four Independence Avenue branch. Finally, on behalf of the trustees and the management of the fund, I submit, my lord. Yes. Now, can you tell the court what you did with these monies? What were they utilized for? My lord. In terms of the pension home loan amount, that very amount was paid in my bond account with Standard Bank, as I have stated. And that has reduced my exposure, my liability to the bank in terms of my bond. And that has allowed me since the bond account was a revolving fund to withdraw even that 900,000, 908,304, to withdraw it. And I have applied that very money, my Lord, for the improvements on my farm, infrastructure as well as the main dwelling as well 
as improvements at my house here in Papagayenweg. That was the funds I've been utilizing to improve my farm. 2010 in my house, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2012, 13, I mean 11, 12, 13, 14. That was the funds that I was applying and using. Plus, in addition to it, the proceeds of the sales of livestock, winners, because that is the issue. That's where the business is, my lord. What you're saying, you speculated with the money in order to create more money on your farm. I am not a speculant. I never have been a speculant. I never bought cattle and resell those cattle. I never did that, my lord. My lordship, it is, it is not in my moral or ethical chemistry. It is not there. I farm. I win and I market. This is the way I am doing my business of farming with my family. With my family, my lord. And it was very productive, my lord, because my farming bank statements with with, uh, with Standard Bank can attest to that. Yes, we've it's handed those in on the previous occasion. My Lord, I, this is what we did. Yes. And I have proof of that, my Lord. The checks that were signed out of that very thing, it was not there, but it's a new fact that the checks were signed out. There were checks of 100,000 spent because I transferred money from my bond account, from my investment account into the farm as well as my personal account farming. SNTs and access where I have savings on my salary. I did that and I can prove that. And I need only, my Lord, I'm pleading, I need only that time to consult a registered accountant to really to present this very fact to the, to the state. My Lord, I submit. While we're on that issue, there was an amount paid to you by Mr. Haito Kalipi of $150,000. Can you tell the court what this was about? Can I, my Lord, can I have some water because I'm drying and getting dry. Mr. Iso, please, you're not exactly the youngest man. You're 65 years of age. If you feel that it's getting too much or you will come to your medical condition now, just bring the court's attention to it that you would like a short break. All right? My Lord, my daughter, our daughter, in fact, with my wife, our firstborn daughter, is married to Thompson at Wikulipi. In the month of October 2011, the year of the Lord, my Lord, in they, in fact, their first anniversary of marriage was 2012. 2012 October. And my wife and I have taken a firm decision, my Lord, a firm decision to say, let us also cultivate a culture, a culture of farming into our kids and give them the opportunity 
to farm with us with a small amount of stock, livestock. And it is on that basis, when we made the offer to them, they said, fine, we will be at least buying some livestock from you, my, my dad. And that 120 was for the buying of livestock. On our ear tax, we have not given them, we have not, on our ear tax, allowing them to come on an annual basis when we do vaccination, my Lord also to see how we vaccinate the cattle, with what medicine are they vaccinated, with what are they treated in terms of the ticks and things like that. I'm a farmer, my lord. I have trained, I was trained, in fact, to be a farmer as well. I was trained as a farmer, my lord, on a block release basis, going to the agricultural union, my lord, going to the Agricultural Union, where they gave me training in life production, livestock production, with my wife, marketing. All those courses, my Lord, I went through. And that was the time when I was a Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, not when I was a Minister of Fisheries. And Adding resources, I submit. My Lord. Mm. Yes, returning to the question, what was the 150,000 for? The 150,000 was for the purchase, for the buying of the livestock, my Lord. And that money was paid into my farming account and not into my personal account, but in the farming account. And I had a positive balance, by the way, in my farming account as well at that time. Can you recall how many head of livestock were purchased? Yeah, um, it was around about 25, 30, if my memory serves me well, for that amount of money. Because livestock is pricey, my lord. It is not, uh, it's not, uh, not something that you get for an apple. Yes. Now, this document, the one-third benefit, my Lord, may it be handed in as Exhibit A6? Yes. It's exhibit A6. Now, what has happened to the farming operation since you've been incarcerated? Since my incarceration, my lord, I was not even on the farm since my incarceration. Yes, I think that's quite obvious. Mm -hmm. but yes, my lord. I was never on the farm. But what happened, my lord, is that, as I've stated before, as I've given evidence before, is that there were, we had housebreaking on the main dwelling, on my main dwelling. We had stock theft. We had a problem, we are still experiencing problems, my Lord, with the management and the administration of our farm presently. This, there's a very serious, serious challenge, a prejudice that we are faced with, with farming. Why? And, it, and the, there is no control on the staff, on the workers on the farm. Although we have a manager or farm supervisor, not a manager, but a supervisor, but what we are experiencing now since my incarceration is not what we have experienced when I was outside. In terms of income from the farm, do you know what income is coming in or is this just something that's in the air at this stage? My Lord, our income has dropped drastically. Our stock as I've said, has dropped drastically. I don't know what is happening there. I'm just getting reports. I'm getting reports from the visits of my wife. Our farm has not become a, pro, uh, a productive unit presently, my Lord. It is 
this very disadvantages that I'm experiencing on the alleged, on allegations that I'm corrupt, I'm labeled as corrupt, I'm labeled as a racketeer, a money launder, I'm labeled as a fraudster, and those very labels through allegations and accusations, my Lord, as I've stated, that is not part of my moral and ethical chemistry. Yes, we're going to come to that. Your health, can you tell the court about this? You have, it's at number two, my Lord, of the bundle, and I presume it must be for Mr. Marundetsi's edification, marked Exhibit B. My Lord, at the age of 65, my Lord. Yes, please will you look at that and you can comment. Mm -hmm. This is a report from Dr. Simon Bashir. He is a cardiologist who attended to you. Can you give us more information on this? It would be Exhibit B1 and his attachment there to B2, my Lord. Can you then just comment on this and your health? at this stage? My Lord, I hope the court will bear with me because the terminology, medical terminology, yes. is not what I'm used to. But I'll try my level best to ab be able to read the results of my medical examination by Dr. Simon Bashir. They have found out that I'm suffering from coronary artery I don't know, disease. And that can also cause, or that is a risk of a heart attack. It was recent. Yes, arteriosclerosis of the heart arteries at risk of a heart attack, correct? Yes, my Lord. Then the second one was cardiac arith arthritis. Arthritis, yes. That's what they have established. The third one was hyperfusion. Severe hypertension. Yeah, severe hypertension. With hypertensive cardiac disease. With cardiac diseases. They have also established the type 2 diabetes and uh, rheuma rheumatic arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, yes. Now, he also stated that my functional capacity is class 2 and 3. I can't read that other next one here. H N N Y H S. He was. He has symptoms of shortened of breath and chest discomfort on physical exertion. Exertion or when under stress. And then his cardiac prognosis is guarded. His therapy will consist of chronic medication, close cardiac follow-up, and life modification. Lifestyle modification. Lifestyle. Yes, just in the interests of speed, it's dated the 12th of December 2022. Uh, Dr. Simon Bashir, cardiologist, correct? Correct, my lord. And the next page is the uh, set out, uh, it would be exhibit B1 and 2. That is the page where he conducted examinations to uh, make this letter to whom it may concern. Is that correct? Correct, my lord. Dr. Bashir is a cardiologist. Did he examine you? Can you tell the court? 
Yes, my lord, uh, it's correct that Dr. Simon Bashir did examine me and uh, I was referred by Dr. Kachitae to Dr. Bashir, who is at the Roman Catholic Hospital, third floor, room five, Venduk. Yes. Now, this is now in medical terms, in plain layman's terms. What were you told by the doctor? What's, what is your condition? I'm not as healthy as I was 65 years ago, 64 years, 65 years ago. When I turned 60 already, even prior to 60, I was under treatment for high blood pressure. I was under treatment for cholesterol. I was under treatment for sugar. And even in 2012, I was hospitalized because of work pressure and the stress I was experiencing in that ministry of fisheries and marine resources. I was hospitalized twice. I collapsed at home because of the stress. No one of my co accused were even next to me, by the way. I didn't know some of them as well. I started to know some of them when I was incarcerated as co accused. Now I'll come to that, my Lord. I'll come to that with evidence as well. Yes. How, how do you feel at this moment in time? Health-wise? Health-wise, my Lord, I feel having a loss in energy. It's not that I'm as I was before. I don't have that vuma, that drive, as we say, my Lord. That drive is no more there. There is a loss. And that simply, that signifies, in fact, that I need to go to a psychologist, maybe, to be examined for depression. I am feeling that there is a lack of concentration, my Lord, in attending to matters or focusing, or focusing on matters. I'm sorry, I don't want to disturb your testimony, but um, I noticed that your witnesses are not book in front of him. Uh, like and he seems to be looking at it uh, repeatedly. I think he's reading from the notebook. Second, yeah. Carol. I beg your pardon, my lord. Um, my learned friend's perspicacity and sight is better than mine. I didn't notice that, but I see the witness has put it to the side. I have had no insight into the notes either. No, not open the book. As you please. Uh, if, if my learned friend would, we'll even give him copies of uh, the notes which we have and which uh, are not in the accused's possession at this stage. But as you please. That's fine. I will need that notebook, my lord. You may have, I may have it, my lord. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. You, you may just put it aside there. So I have a lack of concentration and focus, my Lord. And this are symbols, uh, symptoms that was confirmed by Dr. Henry Olifir. Dr. Henrik Olifir from South Africa, my lord. He has confirmed that such kind of symptoms is not far away from depression. And that's why I'm saying I want still when I'm, liber when I'm at least uh, released on the con from the consideration of the court to go to a psychologist as well. Yes, this condition of depression which you're describing, when did this set on? 
It was since the time my, of my incarceration and the stress that I'm experiencing that I am experiencing this lack of focus, lack of concentration. Fine. Now... And not even doing my normal exercises that I was supposed to do, in fact. Yes. Can you tell us the circumstances of your arrest? How were you arrested? The first arrest, my Lord, started, was in fact on the 23rd of November 2019. I was arrested at home by the ACC. When? On the 23rd. Yes, time. Of, that was in the afternoon after, after 12. They came with a search warrant and they came with a warrant of arrest. Arrest on three counts under Namgoma. The Angolan, the MOU, which I've signed with Angola. I was told it was a purported agreement and I illegally are... Jesus again. Uh, I'm sorry, my lord. Um, this is not an objection, um, but uh, as we are sitting today, my lord, we just have had, and my learned friend, my learned friends have had, read, have gone through the judgment of the Supreme Court in the matter of State versus Ricardo Gustavo, which was dealing with with the, with the circumstances of this type of applications. This is an application on new facts. We cannot go back again and deal with the evidence which was led during the first application or which ought to have been led during the first application, we need to deal with the evidence surrounding the new facts, not to go through the whole process again. I'm saying this on the side of caution, my lord. We don't need to be criticized by the Supreme Court again, especially myself, who appeared in that matter, that we allowed this kind of thing to happen, where evidence which is not relevant to new facts which are supposed to have changed his circumstances is put on record, my lord. Is that in reference to his evidence of it, his first arrest? Yes. Uh, you are saying that it's evidence that was canvassed already? Yes, my lord. All right. Um, my lord, with the utmost respect to my learned friend, if they'd bothered to read the judgment of the Supreme Court properly, then they will see that the Honorable Smuts J.A. specifically stated all supervening facts must be provided to the court in order for the court to evaluate all the facts together with those facts alleged to be specifically new facts. And that was the specific problem in that particular matter, that the court are quo didn't allow all of this information into the record and seemed to take a shortcut. That was the, the gist of the criticism by the, the uh, uh, Supreme Court in that particular matter, that a shortcut was taken, all the evidence wasn't put before the Honorable Court, and the Court took a shortcut in arriving at its decision. Um, these are facts germane to this matter. It's part of the uh, res ipsa locator, the questions, the, the, the flow of events that would uh, enable this Court to come to a conclusion. And it is evidence, new evidence, which wasn't provided to this Court previously in the previous record, unless my learned friend can show us where this witness testified there to. So this is the additional facts which are placed before the Honourable Court, as you please. Are you saying it, it's, it's, it's new evidence, it was not presented Correct, before? Correct, yes, my lord. It's, it's never been placed before the court before. It's new, it's new evidence. Uh, my lord, of when he was arrested, how he was arrested, it's not new evidence. It's there on record. He provided an affidavit, and the affidavit is available. And I've gone through that affidavit. That evidence is there. Well, on the face of it, I would have expected such evidence to, yes, my lord. to would have been dealt with uh, at his initial bail application. Well, I do not have the record of... Um, and he, he never testified, my lord. There was a, an affidavit which was provided. This is viva voce evidence which we're providing today. It's new evidence. Uh, I have, I'm in the hands of the court. Uh, if the court wants us to stand I, down while we provide that record, then I, I'm willing to do so. Is it, it's two ways now. 
Do I hear you to say that it's new evidence because it was only contained in his affidavit and not by way of viva voce evidence? Or it was never uh, presented before the court accord at all? It was never presented before the court accord, my lord. It was uh, an affidavit where these issues were not covered. Okay. What is our time? I, I do not have. Uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't expect um, us to labor much on what was dealt with before and now. It should be common cause because it will be contained in the record of proceeding. Because for us to keep on adjourning and proving from the record what was dealt with and what was not dealt with, it will really uh, take us time. So I would just implore from the parties to uh, senior as you are you are all of you should be able to deal with this issue uh, maybe let me uh, is that uh, 25 past 12 I, I i'm not having my my watch I, I i thought maybe i could give you some few minutes to try and 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 resolve this issue Yes, my lord, I see it's 12.23. In order to resolve the issue, we'll have a copy of the record available to the court by 2.15, as you please. This, this is, my lord, this is also not going to take very long. It would take us about four or five if minutes. If it's in passing, that's fine. If it's just in passing, but as you not please. to per se lead evidence on uh, the details of what probably was already dealt with. It hasn't been for dealt complete, with, lord, For completeness purposes, I, I may allow that. As you please, my lord. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Esau. Could you continue? <coughs> yes. My lord, can you yes. repeat the question? Because I wanted to take notes of some of the issues, but my notebook is now this side, and that was the purpose of my the book here. Yes. So the, these are notes that you're making as you go along. Correct. Can you, my lord? Can I? Can you? Uh, repeat the question. Your, Mr. Metcalf, you may guide the witness. The question. He, he seeks guidance from you. Yes, if you want to make notes as you're going along for what you want to refer to, it's your story, Mr. Esau. It's not my story. Mm -hmm. It's for you to tell this court. Mm -hmm. And you can give it to the state afterwards. Because this was my preparations, my lord. Officer, may you just assist? It was preparations for my bail application. And I don't know the focus side. I don't need to. I think council can just give him a blank piece of pages of paper, my lord, instead of using this, which is it's written, everything is written. I'm not aware of that, my lord. Um, it's full of I, w I would concur uh, <laughs> if we can give the the witness. I need my, lord, I need my, my thing back because it is. Yes, yes. It's very. No, it's fine, Mr. Mm. It is my. Yes, just very briefly, your, your arrest. How did that take place? My Lord, I was arrested on the 23rd of November 2019. I was at home. It was a Saturday. The officers from the ACC in the person of Olafir, one of the investigators, came with the warrants of arrest. He came with a warrant of search, search warrant. My Lord, I have been cooperating with the officers and there were other officers as well. I can't remember their name, but Olifir I remember. He was there. They searched my residence. They searched my study, the study where I'm using to keep documents. They searched my bedroom, main bedroom. They searched the bedroom of my children staying with us. They took a few documents. 
which I was trying to prepare to return to the office. There was a box. And I was saying these documents must go back to the office, but they took that very box of documents. The, they took my devices. I had two, three cell phones, two iPhones, and one Samsung. One of the, of, of, of the iPhones was government, belongs to the government. The other one was my own iPhone. They took those devices, my lord. They told me I'm under arrest, so they took me to the ACC headquarters where I had to sign off all the items that they took and all the documents. And I did that, and after that, I was all the way taken to the prisons. Uh, I can't remember now that suburb there. Hello, this is, H is catching up. Maybe depression is also coming on board. This, I was taken, I was kept there for one night. Following night, I was released uh, because of technical matters. That was the 24th of November, my Lord, 2019. And again, but this, I was arrested on three counts that time. That was no, one count. It was corruption. Using my position, my position as minister for gratification through this illegal MOU, which is called the purported agreement, which was named the purported agreement. Yes. You were arrested on the second occasion. How long were you free? I was only free for 24, 25, 26. And after that, my lord, I was there was another warrant of arrest on the very same matters. Yes. Now, so you were f uh, free the 24th, 25th, the 26th for three days? Yeah, for three days. And where did you go that time? My Lord, I went to my farm because it was, I know that the 27th was a voting day. Yes. And how far is your farm from the border, the Botswana border? My farm is very, very close to the Botswana border. In kilometers, approximately? Kilometers, approximately. It was, let's say, 140. 140 kilometers. Yeah. I was also, in fact, keeping some of my cattle on another farm because it was drought. situation has forced me because I never had any grazing on my farm. I took it to another farm of an acquaintance and the cattle was kept there. And that farm was on the border with Botswana. It's a working just from here to the door, then you are in the border. Yes, approximately 25 to 30 meters, my lord, for the record, from the Botswana border. Yes. And how did your second arrest occur? Can you tell the court? Did you come to Vintuk? Did they come my, fetch you? What was the story? My lord, I was informed by our daughter there is a warrant of arrest and I should come back because she got, she got a call from Vinduk while we were on the farm. So she got a call and she told me that there's a warrant of arrest on the 27th, 20, 27th of November 2019. I came back, I first voted, I first cast my vote on a farm adjacent to our farm called Tennessee. And from there, I drove back to Venduk and handed me over at the main police station. I handed me over, my lord. It was not them looking for me. I heard the story and as a citizen of this country, my lord, as a discipline citizen, I handed, my over, I handed me over to the police. 
To the police? Yes, to the police. Where? Here at the head, co head office. I see. At the head office next to the Windhoek show ground there. I, ca I, don't, I can't remember the street, my lord. The name of the street of the police head office. Good. I can see why the state doesn't want this evidence to be placed before the court. Yes, please continue. Your, your, I, my lord, perhaps I see it is now 12.32. We're going to go into a different section now. But uh, we finished with personal circumstances pertaining to the accused. There will be then, uh, the next section would be what we would term an overview of his portfolio and the new facts which are relevant there too. Perhaps we can then adjourn and we can deal with that new, the new section when we return. Um, will it, because I see that we still have quite enough minutes before one. I'm, I'm in your hands, my lord, I'm in your hands. I just thought that uh, with 27 minutes left, uh, we, but uh, as you please, we can do that then. All right. Thank you. Mr. Esau, we now turn to the next portion of your evidence, and that is what we would term the general overview. Could you tell us about this? My lord, as I stated before, I was appointed or deployed as a minister of state on the 21st of March 2010 in the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. I was a fresher, my lord. I was not coming as a deputy minister of fisheries to the full cabinet or state minister for fisheries, my lord. I, I was blank, to put it that way. I was totally not informed about the legislations, the fisheries management systems, the programs of the ministry, the instruments, SADAC wise, the instruments, bilateral, uh, uh, in fact, uh, when I talk about SADAC, the multilateral instruments, I was never informed about the bilateral instruments, and I was taken, I never knew the staff even of the ministry. I never knew them. I, in fact, my lord, went through an induction. I went through an induction by the then permanent secretary, Franz Shihama was one. I found him there, Mr. Franz Shihama. I assume he's now on retirement. Not that long, he was replaced. He was redeployed, my lord. My lord, I, I, I had, the, had the experience of being called a nuisance, but uh, I think I have to put this on record. My yes. learned friends have brought bail on new facts. And new facts are facts which were not existent at the time of the first bail application. Now the history of his appointment as a minister, the history of his induction in the ministry, those facts were existent. They were known to the accused person and they were known to counsel at the time of the first bill application. What is the relevance of leading this evidence, my lord? Okay. If we were wasting time, my lord. He must go to the point and lead evidence on the new facts which he says, which, he, which, he, which they are deeming have, have impact on the reason why bail was initially re refused, my lord. Not the history of his appointment in induction. This does not take us anyway. My lord, with respect, I fail to understand the state. When uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Kain Galwa comes to testify, he testifies on every aspect pertaining to this particular matter. My learned friend hasn't consulted with this witness. There is a reason why he's outlining this and what, is, what led to the offences with which he's been charged, the persons who were involved 
in all of those. He would have to give an outline pertaining to what happens at his ministry, how the ministry works, and who were the relevant role players. I don't know why my learned friend keeps trying to block evidence from being provided. Obviously, it didn't suit him previously when uh, he knew that uh, the accused would say he was 40 meters away from the Botswana border, yet he returned uh, to home. These things don't sit well with the state, and the state tries to block it. My lord, with the utmost respect, he doesn't even know what we're going to say or what this witness is going to say, and he objects. These inane objections, my lord, are, are really, they become irritating, and they take up time. Uh, he can argue the matter at a later stage, but he doesn't even know what this witness is going to say. I understand his objection to be based on principle, principle in law that new facts would be those circumstances that did not exist at the time of the initial bail application. Quite correct, my lord. Quite correct. These are new facts which will be placed before this honourable court. Uh, which are available at this particular stage. My Lord, if we read the Supreme Court judgment, it was the state went on about the seriousness of the offences and the prima facie case existing against the accused. This is precisely the purport of this evidence. We've set it out as the new facts that, that the state doesn't have this wonderful case against the accused. He will show, he'll give full testimony, and this was also the same uh, criticism leveled against the other witnesses, that they didn't take the court into... Uh, into their bosoms to tell the court exactly what happened and what transpired. This witness is going to tell this court exactly what transpired. That is new evidence. It's new facts which are placed before the court. He's never had the opportunity to testify, my lord. So I can't see where it can be said, oh, it existed previously. Yes, the offences existed, but he didn't know he was charged with these offences previously. The offences with which he was charged were presented approximately a year after uh, he'd appeared on his first bail application. It is new facts, my lord. It's been set out cogently for the state. I cannot, for the life of me, see what the objection would be. Why are they trying to block this evidence? Before I hear Mr. Marondese, um, are you saying that if a circumstance or a fact existed at the time of the initial bail application and it was not placed before court, it will be a new fact in Lord, a subsequent bail application. Yes, my Lord, in as far as it, it relates to these matters, and I've just explained it, my Lord, there were no charges against the accused. He, they weren't charged. They weren't indicted. There was not a summary of substantial facts. He has the right to answer to that. That is what he's doing at this stage. He's yes. taking the court to heart. He's telling the court what happened, and we're coming to the offences, my Lord, um, it's been placed, it's been set out cogently in the new facts which are going to be presented to the court. Um, we'll show why the state doesn't have a strong case. He didn't have the charge sheets against him previously when he appeared in front of the court. And I don't know why there's this attempt to block him from testifying on it. Otherwise, my lord, we may as well just pack up now and say, well, uh, you are guilty until proven innocent and you ha there is no right to bail ever. Uh, that is basically no. what, what, is, what the state is trying to do. It's really on principle, Mr. Metcalf, because at the end of the day, it might amount to a fresh, like a new bail application, as if there was no initial bail application. Uh, a subsequent bail application is, is guided by principles, and it's on that basis that I understand him to be, Indeed, to be objecting. However, I'm, I'm not saying that you may not at all make reference to uh, one or two aspects. But t for it to appear as if you are leading evidence of circumstances that existed at the time of the initial bail application, then that's, that's new. It will be first conversed by this court. It will be traversed by this court for the first time because it was not placed before the court accord. Or the, the, indeed, the, 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 indeed, my lord. the I'm, court I'm that had the initial bill application. Indeed, my lord. I'm, I'm quite, I did them, and I obviously have to defer to the court's um, decisions and wisdom in, and guidance in this regard. I'll, I'll, let's just use this time as the opportune time for us to adjourn for lunch and so that we can gather our thoughts and see how we best yes. proceed after lunch. But Lord, may I just conclude by saying that yes. this is evidence is relates to the charges against the accused. These charges were not put to him 
in 2020, July 2020. It is new facts which are put okay. before the court. He has the right to reply to those charges. Uh, this was the main criticism launched against all the other accused that applied for bail, that they did not answer the charges. I don't know if the state doesn't want him to answer to these charges and the allegations which they've le leveled against him. And he's quite pertinently telling the court, I have a case, I have a good case. I'll tell the court why um, I have a good case and Maybe why these charges are so weak. Maybe it's not clear as to which charges you are referring to, because he's simply started to give evidence, uh, but it's not clear as to perhaps the reason why and to which charges. Maybe that might be helpful. It will become apparent, my lord. It becomes absolutely apparent, and he will refer to each charge as we go along. Thank you. Um, is there anything you would like to say before? We ask? My lord, I think uh, through his discourse with the court, I think he has, he has come to his senses and has accepted the correct principles, my lord. Thank you. We'll uh, adjourn for lunch and be back at quarter past two.